damn it. This is something I've been working on for quite a while. Uh, obviously a work in progress. The barricade with a magazine, but internal magazine. So, fully attached. Well, I can still take the two halves apart. The magazine stays in there. So how do you load and unload it? It's just a spring-loaded flap along here that can be pushed out of the way when darts go in. And it's taped up at the moment with masking tape, just while I'm working on it. I've got some previous footage I took demonstrating how it works. Right, this is what I've got so far for my internal magazine, which I am fairly proud of. Um, quite a major redesign from the original. Just load it up like this. So this has a tiny little hole in here. Focus, you fuck. Comes down there, and then hooks onto that screw, and obviously I didn't know exactly what tension I'd want, so I've done a few holes. So if I do this in slow motion, It's supposed to have your finger right down there. I've designed it so that it will run off three IMRs. I decided not to do LiPo because I want to be able to just leave batteries in it and not have to worry about it. Also, um, I don't want to have to repeat the process of last time where I extended the battery covered uh, with my previous barricade mod because that was quite a hassle and then it sticks out and looks ugly so I like how this is going to be flush and this is obviously a worker magazine I've used latex to mask off the the window there for when I'm painting and then I'll peel it away at the very end so that's going to preserve the transparency of that it's a good way of masking. Safety switch is going to be functioning, but it won't be the master power switch, so there won't be high current going through that. This section here is taken from a deploy. It's the same on the other side. And so is this here. I think it's a super. Oh no, that's no, the same piece. So I thought that gave it a nice. Uh, Aesthetic there, just hold like that. That's how I tend to hold Nerf guns anyway. So this cover, you can see I've cut away the jam door there. That just sits in there. And that will be glued in place eventually. I want to leave it as late as possible to make sure I don't uh, get into a situation where I can't paint easily. Flywheels, uh, original motors, but I'm just replacing the flywheels with rapid strike flywheels. That'll be there. I cut down the muzzle, partly because you just don't need it to be that long, and partly because it's kind of tricky trying to get paint in the in the grill without getting way too much on the outside and causing runs and all sorts of things like that. So it'll be like that. I haven't even put this together yet, so I'm not sure how terrible that's going to look. Yeah, might look stupid actually. Uh -huh. And so this is where the circuit will go. It's going to fit. I'll cut that bit out or just leave it diagonal. You can't see there, so just probably just have it sitting loose like that. Uh, this this here helps hold the um, it presses up against the magazine there. 
to keep it centered so I don't really want to cut that away. Yeah, I kind of regret cutting that down now because it looks stupid. Should have probably left at least one grill hole. Oh well. Live with it. Oh, that's right, and I took a while shaping this little piece here. That piece just slots right in there. Oh, turns out I needed to paint in there. It's not the first time I've been screwed over by the uh, the weirdness of the front of the barricade. It's that that bit there. It's really easy to, to forget to do that. I've done that on both barricade mods. Because when you're holding that piece like that, you go along the top there and around there. I don't realise I need to do that bit. Maybe that's just me. On the other side here, you'll notice all these holes. Uh, one is for the switch. So that'll be the main power switch. And the other is for this, um, this battery tester. That's just got percentages for how full your battery is when you click that button. So that goes Like that, that'll look nice. And that's just about all there is to it. Oh, one more thing. I am yet to put in uh, just my usual infrared sensors there and I'll need to cut a hole on this side. I kind of forgot to do it before cementing that in so I'm gonna to have to try and jam it up in here. Cause I think it's gonna to want to sit about there yeah, right, right on the edge of that, I think. And it's looking like uh, what I'll do is cover this side up. This is the side that you're looking at. I'll have some clear perspex up in there so that you can see that over the top of the gun. Sight pitch would look like that, and clear perspex in there, I'll just frost it and glue it in, and I will shine LEDs into it. Um, a white one for just power on, and then uh, when um, uh, you know reload warning, just have a red one in there and switch to the red one. So just your uh, iron sight, I guess. It's like one of those fiber optic ones, but just with the LEDs, and indicates your ammo status. Now I originally uh, designed the circuit to run brushless motors. Uh, I designed it before I started working on the gun and then I realized that there was just absolutely no way I could fit the um, controllers in there. So that's why I stuck with the barricade motors. I decided I wanted to keep using, you know, because these are expensive and they take ages to get made, so I wanted to use the circuit board even though I'm not using brushless, which meant that I needed a MOSFET and I've put it in here. That sits neatly and it'll sit just flush. And there's even a diode just in there. And the associated resistor that's required for that. And that's about all there is to it. And what I've done for the revving here is I'm not doing two stage like my other barricade. I've got this uh, power tool trigger just from eBay, cheap as. Took off the little uh, catch on the side. And that will sit just in there. And then the 
this is still masked up for uh, painting, but probably like that. So there's one last look of how it will generally appear and it's assemble. Can't wait to finish it. <laughs>